Good morning everyone! Welcome to ICS Weekend Celebration. If it's your first time to tune in, we welcome you. My name is Pat. I'm one of the pastors here at ICS Church. So for the next hour, we will be singing songs of worship. We will be listening to God's Word. So come on, call in your friends, call in your family. Don't forget to share this live stream on your timelines. And come on, let's worship the Lord together. Happy Sunday, everyone, and welcome to Church Online. I invite everyone to worship with us today. You may be sitting, you may be standing, it doesn't matter. The words will flash on the screen so you can sing along and worship with us. done 
sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Just 
what to do.
Hello and welcome again to ICS Church. My name is Chad. For those of you who are joining us today for the first time, I'm one of the pastors here at ICS Church. Again, it's a joy for us to have you with us this morning, the first Sunday of April. So if you've been watching us for the last couple of weeks, you'd notice a bit of a change in our set. It's because it's summer here in the Philippines. Summer is coming in. It's very hot right now outside. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really enjoy the sun as much right now because of uh, the ECQ or the Enhanced Community Quarantine now ending on its uh, third Week. But regardless, hey, we want to continue to celebrate the life that the Lord has given us every moment of every day. So uh, we want to thank you just again for joining us today. And I just want to 
of uh, the special people right here, uh, part of ICS Church, Mama Sonia Sumkaj. She's having her birthday today. So if you know her, make sure that you send her a message and greet her. We're grateful for the life that she has lived and continues to live among us. And we pray for God's blessing continuously flowing in your life, Mama Son, in the year to come. Before we get into the word, why don't you just join me right now in prayer as we come to the Lord and commit every care and concern that we have. Let's entrust all that's going on in our lives, in our thoughts, and in our minds under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful for your faithfulness to us. Thank you so much that through every season, regardless of what's going on around us, we can find your presence guiding us, abiding in us, wherever we are. Lord, today we ask that you continue to sustain every work that is being done by frontliners, government workers, not just here in Metro Manila, in the Philippines, but around the world. Lord, we pray that you would continue to grant wisdom, guidance, strength, and safety for all that are seeking ways to resolve uh, this issue, Lord God, of the virus. We pray, Lord God, for a vaccine to be found as soon as possible. We ask, Lord, for many lives to continue to be saved and preserved. We ask, Jesus, that even those that are grieving in this season, that your comfort presence would be upon them and over them and for those are god who are in need or experiencing lack you are jehovah jireh the god who provides and we ask lord that every provision would be met lord whether it is uh through a neighbor a friend the government or a supernatural means lord let every need be met right now whether it is a physical need an emotional need or a mental need a spiritual need Father, we know that you can meet all these needs and you can use every person, every situation so that these things are addressed. We thank you, Father, that we can continue to lift up all these cares and concerns to you because you love us and this is what you've asked us to do. We look forward, Lord, to the answers to these prayers. We submit it to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, if you haven't heard some of the things that we want to celebrate this past week, you know, for the last... Uh, Three weeks, we have been praying nonstop from Monday to Friday, and we're grateful to be able to hear and to see answers to these prayer this past week. We saw uh, Ron that we've been praying for who had symptoms of COVID uh, be released from the hospital. On Friday, he finally was able to go home. There were so many others that we want to continue to celebrate, a, and I encourage you wherever you are, to continue to come and uh, press into the presence of God and expect miracles in your circumstances, in your situations, because God knows exactly what you're going through and he desires to answer and meet every need. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to get into the word right now. And uh, again, if you are a note taker, you can write this down. The title for today's message is Focus on Forever. Focus on Forever forever. What have you been focused on this past week? What has constantly grabbed your attention or taken energy out of you this past few days? Whatever it is, uh, you can expect that whatever you give your attention to probably has affected your attitude. It's probably affected your attitude. That's just a, a reality that happens to all of us. You know, whatever we focus on, our eyes on, whether it's the, the needs that we see around us or the focus is on just getting help and assistance out and about whatever it is that is causing us to be busy or to occupy our mind, most likely will affect our attitude, will affect our disposition, will affect uh, our whole aura, you know, our, our life ultimately. And these are some things that we need to be aware of. The thing is, the majority of our concerns right now are temporal. That's the reality, right? Uh, if you're in uh, quarantine, if you're in lockdown, um, this is temporary. The virus that's plaguing the world right now, it's temporary. Um, the extreme extremities of, uh, of this situation is temporary. We're looking forward to a time when this too will end. And um, I want to encourage you today uh, not to be overwhelmed by the temporary, but rather to be more focused on what is eternal, things that are forever, because those are the things that matter most, and those are the things that ultimately will benefit 
our life, your life, and mine as we pay focus or pay attention on those things. We're going to look at a passage today that was written by Paul. This was a guy uh, who was pretty much living a, a good life back in the first century. In fact, he was a devout Jew, and when Christianity was starting off, he was going around uh, rebuking and correcting and persecuting what he thought was actually uh, wrong. And something happened in his journey that caused him to have a 180 degree turn in his life. Uh, the faith that he was once persecuting, the person that he once did not believe as savior, uh, he suddenly found himself committing his own life as a follower, as a committed follower of Jesus Christ. And as a result of this, he would end up uh, preaching and spreading the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ in places where the gospel had never been preached in Asia Minor or the Middle East. He's actually one who wrote the majority of what we now call in the Bible the New Testament. The majority of this was written by Paul. So he's one that came to faith late. He wasn't part of the 12 disciples of Jesus. But today we're going to look at a letter that he wrote because it's significant. We want to find out what made the difference, what caused him to switch. And here in his letter to the Corinthian believers in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, this is where we're going to read from today. Beginning with verse 16, it says, Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So, we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that we cannot, that cannot be seen. For the things we can see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. So he discovered something right here in this part of his letter where he's encouraging uh, the readers. Guys, you know, there are things that we're going through. Uh, he had been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, and in places that they have gone, that he has taken this message, he has experienced persecution that he once was giving to those who were preaching. Now he was a recipient of this. He was going through difficulty. He was going through strife. He was going through so much hardship. And yet here, in this point in his letter, he says, hey, we don't need to be overly concerned about all these things. In fact, the life that we live will experience this kinds of challenges and strife. Regardless, whether we're preaching the gospel or not, life will just be filled with trouble and difficulty. Why? Because that is the world that we live in today. It's not a perfect world. There is sin, there is evil, there is difficulty that is found in this world. But his encouragement is, you know what? We shouldn't focus on those things. Why? Because they are only temporary. They would last only for a moment or for a season. Rather, we should focus on what is forever or on what is eternal. Why? Because what we give attention to affects our attitude. He discovered that. He discovered that there were certain situations and certain circumstances that he faced even as a follower of Jesus and as he was journeying his life in following Christ, that there were things that weren't worth uh, spending so much time, effort, and pouring yourself into. Why? Because it will just steal the joy out of your life. It will take the peace out of your life. Rather, he learned and he discovered a secret of placing his expectation, his eyes, on things that matter most in life. Now, some of us are discovering that, you know, in this past few weeks. Some of us have discovered that, you know what, uh, that work that I love so much that I couldn't wait for Monday to come and, you know, that whole week because I love my work so much, suddenly, all of a sudden, it's, it's, it stops. It's taken away from us. Those of us who were so focused on finances and building wealth, all of a sudden, hey, there is financial trouble, not just here in the Philippines, but around the world. Things that we thought were of great value, all of a sudden in a moment, is gone. People who thought were healthy suddenly found, discovered themselves sick. And just like that, it's gone. You know, this virus is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of money or, you know, only have a couple of coins in your pocket. Everybody 
is getting affected by this virus and the collateral damage uh, that it is uh, making throughout the world, affecting economies, affecting businesses, affecting travel and life as, as we know it. And if your focus has been on those things that are temporal, it would be very difficult right now to live in the season we're in because a lot of those things right now are non-existent or have been put on pause. But if our vision and our eyes are fixed on things that go beyond this life, then we have a perspective and an understanding that will enable us to go through a season that is only temporary. And that is what Paul is talking about right here. And that's what we want to unpack for this next few minutes. We want to learn what is it that he discovered? What is he talking about? What should be the forever or eternal things that we need to fix our eyes on? Here's a truth that I want us to remember today. Our vision drives our mission. Whatever you see, whatever you focus your life on, whatever you fix your gaze or your eyes on, that ultimately will drive your life. For some of us, it might have been wealth. Some of us, you know, our vision was a perfect relationship, perfect family. Maybe for those of you who are pastors or ministers, we had a vision of a perfect church, a way to do ministry, and all of a sudden, you know, it's gone. It's taken out from us. Whatever our vision is that can drive us. For some of us, our vision is to continue to extend help to others. And so how we see our possession, our wealth, our treasure, our time ultimately dictates that direction of our life. The vision that we have directs that mission, informs our decisions about how we use our time, our talents, and our treasure. And right now, that's what we want to look at. What is Paul talking about? What did he discover that was of great value to him that caused him to stop on his tracks even though everything was okay with his life and suddenly make a change in terms of faith and direction that totally transformed his life. If we want to focus on the eternal, just like Paul did, that one big truth was discovering Jesus. You know, next Sunday is Easter Sunday. And we're going to be talking about why we believe what we believe. What is the value of Easter with millions of followers of Jesus Christ? After 2,000 years, it seems that the most popular book right now is still the Bible. And his followers continue to believe in him. What is it about him? Paul discovered some things. And that is what we look at today. How do we actually focus on the eternal like Paul did? Well, one of the things that we'll find out is that Paul got a revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, if you've never had a personal revelation of Jesus in your life, it's hard to get a grasp or a focus on what is eternal, on what is forever. Paul was happily living his life, faithfully following Jewish teachings and persecuting what he thought was wrong, witnessing their deaths, witnessing their difficulties, the Christ followers in the first century. But on a road near Damascus, the ancient city of Damascus, he has a supernatural encounter that blinds him, literally blinds him. It's a bl blinding light. There were other travelers with him, tells us in the book of Acts chapter 22. They saw the light, but it was only Paul who clearly heard the voice that was speaking to him. And it was Jesus. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And this encounter radically transforms the life of Paul from one of persecuting Christ followers to suddenly encountering Jesus Christ. This unique, pivotal point in his life causes him to put his faith in Christ. Jesus instructs him, go, go ahead to the city. There will be a man by the name of Ananias who will come and meet you. He will share to you who I am. And sure enough, this takes place. Ananias meets him. Ananias prays for him. And his, his sight is restored. And from that point on, Paul now becomes an ardent, devout follower of Jesus Christ. Preaching, teaching, and telling people 
about this man who came on earth, lived without sin, died, was crucified, and three days later rose again, never to die evermore. It's people who have received a personal revelation of Jesus Christ that are able to see beyond the temporal. If you've had a personal encounter of Jesus, you know what I'm talking about. Those of us who have put our faith in Jesus Christ are sold out to his cause, are sold out to him. Our faith, our belief rests upon him. That is what happened to Paul. He was able now not just to focus on what was temporary, what was happening around him, because his faith in Christ didn't mean that everything would now be okay. No, in fact, it got more difficult. First, it was difficult because he was wanting to connect with the Christians in the first century, and because of his reputation, none of them wanted to invite or welcome Paul into their midst. Why? Because his reputation preceded him as one who was a persecutor of Christian, one, one that was throwing Christians in jail and even witnessing their deaths. And so n not a lot of people quickly believed his true conversion or transformation. But once they embraced him, he began to share the gospel. And in places where he went, he encountered all kinds of difficulties. And his desire to see the message of Jesus preached where it was never preached before, he was flogged, he was beaten, he was jailed, he was shipwrecked three times. You know, he ended up uh, floating along in the open ocean for a night and a day. He ended up being marooned on an island. I mean, all kinds of trouble came over his life. And yet, despite these challenges, he continued to pursue and to follow Jesus, even though Jesus was physically no longer present. What was the difference? The difference was his personal encounter. It was because of this pivotal point in Acts chapter 2 where he personally encountered Jesus Christ. If you've never experienced or encountered Jesus personally, it's going to be hard to look beyond the eternal. We will be you know, we, we, will, we will be quick to, to be distracted by the cares and concerns of this life. Why? If we don't believe that Jesus truly is the Son of God, if we don't believe that He really is Savior and Lord, everything that happens to us can easily distract us from following Him. But not for Paul. Despite of these many challenges that posed as a threat to his faith, that should have and probably even has made some people shrink back from their faith, that didn't happen to Paul. Unless we get a personal revelation of who Jesus is, not a hand-me-down faith, not a faith that you know we received uh, because we were born in a Christian family or we were born with Christian parents, no, Unless we personally encounter Jesus Christ, when the most difficult circumstances surround us, just like what we're experiencing right now, this will really reveal what our relationship with Jesus is. Now, if you've never encountered Christ, this probably doesn't mean anything to you. But just like Paul, my challenge for you is, hey, why don't you find out who he really is? I mean, if he is who he really says he is, then it will make all the difference in the world. And if he isn't, you know, you don't lose anything. Why? Because everything that Jesus teaches and the principles and the life that he lived continues to add value even to our life today. But I personally believe that he truly is the Son of God, that he truly was here on earth, that he really lived a life without sin and was crucified on the cross died, resurrected on the third day, and never to die again. Paul encountered this Jesus, and he desires to be made known to each one of us. He wants each one of us to know him personally. And if we would just turn towards his direction, he will. He will reveal himself to us. Secondly, we can learn to focus on forever and on eternity by getting a faith for the journey. When we develop faith for the journey, this is what will enable us to go through 
the most difficult circumstances. You know, Paul didn't just start with having a personal encounter with Jesus. No, it was his faith that was built over time and over the different seasons of his life. In fact, here in Hebrews 11, it says, you know, faith is the confidence that we have in the, the assurance of things that we hope for, things that we do not see. Where is your faith leaning on? A lot of people have faith in all kinds of things. But unless that faith is in something that lasts beyond this lifetime, it's going to be a meaningless faith. For Paul, his faith was in Jesus Christ. And this faith enabled him to go through the most difficult seasons in his life and in his journey. In fact, in many of his encounters, it was his faith that continued to strengthen him. You know, he talks about his journey in Philippians chapter 3. And he says, you know what? I, I was someone that was schooled in the law. I was an expert of the law. I mean, if you want to talk about Jews, hey, that's me. I'm a Pharisee. I'm an expert of the law. I'm even a Roman. I mean, you want to talk about pedigree? That's me. I have all the requirements to be the best at I am. But you know what? All of those things, I count it as rubbish. It's all meaningless right now compared to Jesus Christ, compared to what I have found and I've discovered in Christ. And he would go on to say, you know, it's not because of me, it's not because of my righteousness, but it's because of the faith that God has given me. Faith. That's important to sustain us in our journey. Without us fully trusting and believing that God is with us every step of the way, it's going to be hard. There are so many people right now who are trying to grasp and, and hold on to things, but they cannot hold it. Why? Because it's not there. For some of us who fully lean on our wealth right now because of the difficult circumstances, it's hard to find that. For some of us who were leaning on the jobs that we have, even job security right now, is not all that sure. Relationships, not all that sure. But one thing that remains consistent and that is dependable is the presence of God. When we put our faith in Jesus, he will be the one to fill what is needed in our lives. The assurance of faith is found in him. Things that we don't regularly see, that requires faith. There's a story about Moses in Hebrews chapter 11. And it says here, you know, Moses decided to turn his back from the riches of Egypt to pursue the promise that God had for him as he led the nation of Israel to the land of promise. He had not yet seen it. He had not tasted it. But because he had faith that God was the one that was leading him, he was willing to let go of the riches, to turn his back on the comforts of the ancient empire of Egypt and to walk through the desert pursuing the land that God had promised the nation of Israel. And ultimately, the nation of Israel was able to possess that land. But the writer of Hebrews says, hey, that was about faith. Moses encountered so many challenges while he was leading millions of people across the desert, but he didn't shrink back. He continued to press forward. In fact, there were times when God himself was frustrated with his own people in the desert. And yet Moses continued to stand in the gap and intercede. And on behalf of the people, come to God. And because of this, God's grace was poured out. And he continued to show mercy and grace to the nation of Israel. It was because of Moses' faith that enabled him to move forward. Where is your faith leaning on today? So many things in the world right now are uncertain. Even tomorrow, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what lies in the future. But you know one thing that we can be assured of as Christ followers? We know who holds the future. It's already been written out. And so the confidence that we have as we read in the scriptures is that God is still the one that's in control and he is the one that is outworking his purposes through every and all circumstances. It may not 
pan out or work out the way that we would expect. But as a person of faith who follows Jesus, we can expect that he will only outwork the good things so that his name will be glorified. We can be assured of our present circumstances and look forward to a brighter day. Why? Because of the promises of God. That's faith leaning on God. And that will enable us to move forward and focus on eternity. We can focus on the eternal by getting going and keeping moving. When we get going and keep moving, we will see God leading us every step of the way. This is what Paul did when he first became a follower of Jesus and his life turned around. You know, he didn't wait for him to be perfect. And God didn't wait for him to be perfect before he started using him. You know, whatever situation it is in your life, whatever stage it is you're going through, wherever you are, in your situation. You don't have to wait to be perfect. Why? Because we can't. We won't attain that. But God, in his grace and his mercy, can use us if we are willing, if we would turn in his direction and follow him. And that's what we see happening in Paul's life. The moment he became a follower of Jesus, he began pursuing him. He began talking about him, sharing his experience about Christ, going to places where his message had never been preached before. And this allowed him fuel for the journey. He continued to look beyond, regardless of the circumstances that was happening around him or towards him, whether he was getting persecuted or getting thrown in jail, whether uh, circumstances beyond his control were happening to him that threatened even his own life because his eyes were already focused on the eternal and God's presence lead, led by his Savior. He just kept going. He just kept moving. Now, it doesn't matter the circumstances that we're facing right now. We don't know how soon circumstances, the difficulties, uh, this virus will cease. We don't know when. But one thing is certain, God is with us and desires to use us where we are. But we need to stop getting overwhelmed by the temporary, by the concerns of this world. I understand that all of us have needs. Yes, provision is important. To have a roof over our head, to have a place to sleep, to have food to eat, those are all essential needs. But you know, God has already met those needs. For those who will put their faith in Jesus Christ, in Matthew 6, 33, he says, you know, when you seek me and my kingdom first, when you put me at the center of your life and you make me a priority, all of your needs have already been met. They've already been met. Why? Because I'm the one that will provide for you. If you look at the birds of the air or the grass of the field that are here today and gone tomorrow, I'm the one that's sustaining that. How much more? each one of you who are called by my name. You're my son. You're my daughter. This is how much God loves us and desires to address every need that we have. But at the same time, Paul reminds us these things should not be our immediate concern. These temporal things, God will meet. What's most important is that we fix our eyes on what is eternal. The value of life our relationship with the Lord, how we invest in the relationships around us, how we reveal God's grace, her mercy to those around us, how we express his love in ways that are tangible, how we show kindness, how we show compassion to people in our home, the way we talk, the way we relate to one another, what we do with our finances, what we do with our talent, what we do with ourselves. As we get a perspective on who God is, as we get a revelation on eternity, a revelation of Jesus, faith for the journey, moving, getting going, as we focus on these things, we will see God lead us every step of the way. 
There may be some of you right now who are desiring to experience this. You're overwhelmed with around you, the lack of basic needs. Perhaps fear is slowly creeping in. Anxiety is present. These are temporary. Why? Because all these things will pass. When God, Jesus himself, returns, there will be a new heavens and a new earth. All things will pass away. Behold, all things will be made new. That's what he says. The beauty about this is we can experience part of that reality now in our life. And so if that's your desire, would you just pray with me at this moment, inviting His Spirit and His presence to lead you where you are. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love for us. Thank you for sending your Son Jesus to show us how to live as men, to die for us, to resurrect and never to die again so that we can be restored in our relationship with you. Jesus, we thank you for your love and your sacrifice. We ask that you continue to help us know how to live a life fully the way that you intended it. As your Holy Spirit comes and leads us, help us to submit to him in all of our ways. Just like Paul encountered him, Lord, help us to have a personal revelation of who you are as our loving Savior, Redeemer, Master, and Lord. Help us, Lord, to experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit every day that we may not lack in anything. The joy, the righteousness, the peace that comes from your Spirit would manifest in our attitudes, in our actions, in the way that we lead lead our lives, in the way that we prioritize things in our lives. Thank you so much for your love for us. We commit to you our lives daily. Come and lead us and use us, Lord, to be a blessing to those around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you're watching the stream and you want to know more about what it means to follow Jesus Christ, would you send us a message right here? at facebook.com forward slash ICS Church. We want to help you learn to take the next step in your walk with the Lord. You can also email us at info at icschurch.com and we want to encourage you to stay in touch. Wherever you are, whatever journey you're in, know that God is with you. The challenges that we're facing right now is only temporary. So let's lift our eyes off of our temporal situations and get them fixed on Jesus because He alone is the author, perfecter, and finisher of our faith. God bless you.